Hey everyone, I'm Tila with Deep English. Thank you for joining me for another lesson today. Today we'll be learning five idioms and their origins. An idiom is an expression or a phrase whose meaning isn't necessarily obvious. And so even if you understand every single word within the idiom, you may not understand the idiom itself. And so it's really important to take some time to learn and memorize these idioms because they are frequently used within the English language. And so instead of translating word for word, which what each one means and probably embarrassing yourself, when you hear these idioms now, you'll automatically know what they mean. So let's get the ball rolling. That's an idiom that means to get started. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's do idiom number one, to let the cat out of the bag. To let the cat out of the bag. Hmm. If we were to translate this one literally, we might think that it means to open a bag and to let a cat out. <laughs> Imagine how embarrassing it would be if you were in a conversation with an English speaker and they said, okay, just let the cat out of the bag. And you started looking around for a bag with a cat in it. <laughs> that, that would be hilarious, but also embarrassing. So let's learn a little bit about the origin of this idiom and then also what it means. So this idiom probably came from the 1700s when people would purchase a pig and the pig would be in a bag. And when they got home, they would look in the bag and there would be a cat in the bag instead. So cats were less valuable than pigs. So oftentimes people would replace a pig with a cat. And by the time they got home and they looked and they realized that they had been tricked, it was too late and they had a cat instead of a pig. I would hope that you would recognize if your bag had a cat in it instead of a pig, but apparently many people did not. But it's also said this this phrase may have come from somewhere else. So the British Royal Navy had a whip that they kept aboard the ship and the whip was called cat o nine tails And this whip would be used on people who committed a crime on the ship. The whip was kept in a bag. Ooh, that's scary. So let's see if you can guess what it means to let the cat out of the bag. What might that mean when used in a conversation today? To let the cat out of the bag. I'll give you a moment. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so if you guessed that to let the cat out of the bag meant to reveal a secret, then you're right. So letting the cat out of the bag means to reveal a secret or reveal a secret accidentally. So you accidentally say a secret that you weren't supposed to say. So we might use this one in a sentence like, I was so upset that he let the cat out of the bag and told my family I was moving to South America before I even had a chance to tell them. Or we might use it in a sentence like, in my own life, my family knows that I'm not a good secret keeper. So when my brother-in-law wanted to ask my sister to marry him, he didn't want me to let the cat out of the bag. And so he decided to tell me at the very last second, just minutes before he was going to propose, what he was doing and that I needed to be there. And so in this way, he prevented me from letting the cat out of the bag. And so he kept that proposal a secret to let the cat out of the bag. Have you ever let the cat out of the bag before? If so, feel free to comment below. I know I would love to read about how you've let a secret out accidentally, or maybe you tried to let the cat out of the bag. Put, put below if you've let a cat out of a bag. All right, so let's move on. Our second idiom is to fly off the handle. To fly off the handle. If we were to look at this one literally, we might think of something that has a handle like a coffee mug. We might think that this meant the mug flew away from the handle. <laughs> of course, that's not what this one means. 
So let's take a closer look. This one probably came from the 18th century when poorly made axes would fly off the handle when they were being used. So how scary would that be? The sharp part of the ax just flying away through the air. So to fly off the handle. This one is a little bit tricky. Let's see if you can guess what to fly off the handle means when used today. To fly off the handle. Hmm. Okay, to fly off the handle means to become suddenly angry. So we might use this in a sentence like, I didn't expect him to fly off the handle and start yelling at me after I quit. Or, she's usually a pretty calm person, but she will fly off the handle if you insult her dog. So to fly off the handle, to become suddenly angry. Do you know someone who frequently flies off the handle? Or maybe you often fly off the handle. <laughs> if so, feel free to share with us below. I know I'd be interested in reading what makes you fly off the handle. Okay, let's move on to our third idiom. Our third idiom is to cost an arm and a leg. To cost an arm and a leg. If we were to translate this one, literally, we might think that it meant to pay for something with our arm or our leg. So imagine being at the grocery store and instead of having to pay $5, you have to pay your arm or your leg. <laughs> no one would pay with their arm or their leg. So this one has to have a different meaning and it does. So let's take a look at the origin of this idiom. To cost an arm and a leg probably came from the 18th century when famous people would have their portrait painted. They would often leave out their arms or their legs because it was said to be very expensive to include both of your arms and your legs in the painting. So to cost an arm and a leg. Can you guess what it means to cost an arm and a leg? If you guess to be extremely expensive, you're right. This one means to be extremely expensive. We might use it in a sentence like, I really loved the beautiful sweater, but I wasn't going to pay an arm and a leg for it. So when the sales lady said that I could get it on a discount, I said, yes, I'd love to have the sweater. Or he told me not to spend an arm and a leg on his birthday present because he knew I was saving money to take a trip. So to cost an arm and a leg, to be extremely expensive. All right, let's move on to our fourth idiom. And this one is hands down, hands down. Translated literally, this one just simply means to have hands down. So of course, it has a different meaning when used in conversation today. So let's take a look at the origin of this one. This one probably came from the 19th century during horse racing. When a jockey was very far ahead, he would let go of the reins and he would put his hands down and win the race. So he would win hands down. So this one actually means to win something or accomplish something with very little effort. So not trying very hard and you're still able to win. So we might use this in a sentence like, her cake won the contest hands down. It was so much more delicious than every other cake there. Or I prefer soup over salad hands down. So there is no contest between the two. Soup is clearly way better, in my opinion. So hands down. All right, let's move on to our fifth and final idiom. And this one is riding shotgun. Riding shotgun. So if we were to look at this literally, we might think that it, it means to ride or take a ride on a shotgun. Instead of riding a horse, you could ride a shotgun. Mm, no, I don't think so. That is completely ridiculous. So let's look at what this one really means. So to ride shotgun. This one probably came from the Wild West. 
So back in the day in the wild, wild west, when someone was driving, they would often have someone beside them who had a shotgun. And so if there was a thief that came up and tried to steal things from the caravan, the person who had the shotgun could protect the caravan. So that's probably where this one came from. So can you guess what it means today to ride shotgun? I'll give you a moment. Okay, to ride shotgun simply means to sit in the front seat next to the driver. This is a really common phrase in American movies, especially movies with teenagers in them. You'll often hear one of the teenagers say, I call shotgun. And that simply means to say aloud that you are reserving the front seat for yourself. Every single person I know would respect that reservation. So if you are ever with a group of English speaking people and you say, I call shotgun, it's very likely that then you will be able to sit in the front seat and that people will respect that you reserved that seat. Of course, unless you are a child, then it's not appropriate for you to sit shotgun. So shotgun is simply that front seat next to the driver. Do you have a phrase in your language for calling shotgun? If so, feel free to comment below. I love to look at the similarities and differences in different languages. All right, that does it for today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It was an absolute pleasure. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did as well. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a like um, or comment or subscribe. And if you're interested in getting more free English lessons, click below for a free course in English. Thank you guys so much. I'm looking forward to our next lesson together. See you later. Hey, before you go, I just want to remind you that while it's awesome to watch these videos, the most important part is practice. So when you leave your chair today and go out in the world, seize the day and practice. Let me know in the comments how you plan to practice your English today. I'll read every one and I look forward to it.